Hello, my fellow Whovians. Welcome back to Cafe Crashdown. I am Kayla here at the Crash Hub, if you don't know who I am. And today we are talking about season 14, the episode Legend of Ruby Sunday. And let me tell you, they dropped a major bombshell at the end of this last episode. Hello, Whovian universe. We have a lot to talk about, so let's roll that intro. So this episode brought back one formidable foe in the classic Doctor Who universe, and I am so excited for this reveal. Honestly, it was worth it. Was worth it. It was worth the the long wait, the very interesting episodes to get to this point to have this reveal. Mr. S. Sutek back here as our formidable foe, and my God, I was not expecting it to go in this direction. There doing all of the twists, right? We got Susan Twist in this episode, but we got so many different twists to kind of lead us in different directions and to still keep us guessing through this episode of who this big bad was. So to get Sue Tech, the destroyer, back from Pyramid of Mars, just to have him back, the original voice actor doing the voice, hearing that voice just radiate in that room, you're like, oh hell, this is amazing. <laughs> I was so excited. Just definitely was not what I was expecting. So you know what? Let's just get into it. So I definitely think with this episode, if you have been a fan for a very long time and are familiar with this new villain, or if you're a newcomer, I do think that this episode was quite the thrill ride. And it gave a lot of what we have been waiting for and just longing for. So overall, I am very happy with this episode and I'm very excited to see what the empire of death for the next episode is gonna be. And it makes sense with the episode of last week, which ugh, I know I was bummed out about. Again, I really think in, when I do a full season rewatch, probably gonna like it a lot more. And especially given that now that we know what we're getting into in these episodes, it was definitely understandable now to have an episode that was like the calm before the storm. You know, things are about to get really, really intense, especially now that we have this God of death that's in full form, ready to like Godzilla it, right? And so, you know, they wanted us to have a really fun episode with Rogue that's like flirty and fun, getting some whimsical monsters that we usually get in Doctor Who. So I get it, I do. I still think there was something missing a little bit in that episode, but listen, we're not talking about that episode. We are talking about the legend of Ruby Sunday. So just to um, kind of line things up a little bit, I'm not gonna do like a full recap, but the Doctor and Ruby slide in with the TARDIS. And when I sl say slide in, I mean they slid into Unit <laughs> with the TARDIS on the Doctor Who bridge. And voila, they're at Unit. And so we've got Kate, we've got little Rose, which I was so happy to see. I love Rose as a character. I'm hoping that she's gonna be in the next one, which I'm kind of assuming that she is. So we know now that she works at UNIT, which is cool. And we also got confirmation that Donna does for sure work for UNIT, which is another cool little tidbit. And that little, little brief moment of the doctor being like, how's your uncle? Well, we know who that is. So uh, just very, a lot of very cute moments. We also got to meet Morris Gibbons, who is a new character. He is a, I think they said 13 year old, basically, science prodigy that's now working at UNIT and he definitely is a prodigy. He's absolutely brilliant through this episode with all the different things that he interacts with the doctor with. So this whole episode is really focused around the actress Susan Twist. This woman that keeps showing up in all of these different time periods and time frames everywhere that the doctor goes he sees this woman following him. And so he is reaching out to Unit and is like, hey, we gotta figure out who this is. What is she doing? What is her connection? And they already recognize who she is in their timeline because it's part of S Triad, this technology company, and she's the face of the company. And she's about to give a really big speech to the entire world. Uh, and a, I think in a couple of hours, I can't remember the timeline for that, but yeah, I think it's just within a few hours, she's gonna be giving this 
really big speech and so they're trying to figure out who she is and there is this kind of play with her possibly being susan the granddaughter of the doctor so it gets brought up about regeneration because you know kate asks if susan would recognize him given that he has a different face and the doctor's like yes all i have to do is stare in her eyes and know that that is susan and so ruby's a little confused by this and so this is where he explains very simply the process of regeneration for time lords and how he regenerates and changes his face and then he makes a little quip of well i'm gonna have this one for a very long time so which we hope so because i really really enjoy this actor playing the doctor and i think there's just a lot more to explore with him and so i definitely hope that they keep him around for a little bit i do have to say i'm really glad that they didn't um bring susan into this if they are going to bring her in at least not right away and i'm glad that susan's not the big bad i think the reveal of sutek at the end being the big bad of this season is definitely way more exciting so when they were going down the susan route i was kind of sitting there like oh i mean that's kind of cool to see susan but also mm, like a little underwhelming but man they threw in that twist and here we are so then in this episode, we get the time window room, which was actually very funny when the doctor was asking Kate if they had this kind of a room and she was like, absolutely not. No, you told us X amount of years ago to never have this technology and to destroy it. And he's like, okay, yeah, but what, like what floor is it on? She's like, it's on the 10th floor, or whatever it is. So it was just, it was really cute and funny. Um, Cause yeah, of course, of course they're gonna keep this technology. That's just how unit is. So they get into the time window and they're trying to figure out the connection of Ruby to all of this as well, because it's not just this woman, Susan, that's in all of these dreams, but Ruby is also connected to this whole story as well. And so the doctor's like, I think this lies into finding more about her origin story. So we find out that Ruby has this VHS tape of camera footage of that area during that night when she was a baby at the church. And so he has this idea of let's use the time window. You can use me, I'm Time Lord Magic, sir. Uh, you know, and we can use this VHS tape and make a connection here and bring it to life in this room. And so they're able to recreate a lot of the scene, um, but then things go a little haywire. And then this is where we get Sutek coming in because at first we're seeing the TARDIS and it's acting crazy and basically possessed. And you're like, what the hell is going on? And sure enough, then we're gonna get this reveal of Sutek who has been dabbling his hands into everything and leading us up to this point. Sutek, the destroyer, the god of death, who totally, he has like this like jackal look, which my first thoughts when I saw it was like, oh, this is like Anubis from ancient Egypt. You know, he's the god of death of ancient Egypt. So I, I like that like little tie in there, if you know anything about mythology and things like that. And, you know, given that we're diving into this world of pantheons and this pantheon of gods, um, they're only saying the one. So I, you know, I'm kind of like, I assume we're gonna find out more, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe it's not even relevant, but I would assume that there are more than just one Pantheon. So let's talk a little bit about this villain because for those of you who have not seen the classic Doctor Who back in the day, you have no idea who this is and that's completely okay. We're just gonna do like a very, very brief, quick dive. So we first see this guy in 1975 in the Pyramids of Mars. And yeah, given his look, he, he was worshiped in ancient Egypt. He is like an ancient Egyptian god, god of death. And he is feared across the entire universe or universes for his need for destruction and death, AKA Sutuk the Destroyer, you get where I'm going with this. So in Pyramids of March, he was a very manipulative, very cunning villain who could manipulate time, manipulate minds. He was a very difficult foe for the doctor, but eventually the doctor was able to trap him in a time corridor, which they totally infer about this. Um, and 
couple different variations actually, different episodes that kind of bring this up through the toy maker, through the maestro, and even Sutuk in this episode kind of mentions that basically he's been trapped for a while and he's just been biding his time and waiting for the moment to be able to be freed and to reveal himself. And this definitely seems a revenge thing against the doctor specifically, um, especially given that this little old lord of time was able to trap a god in this corridor and to keep him suppressed for a while. So, you know, a very chipper pantheon from the sounds of it, right? They all just sound great. We love that. So with the presence of this villain, it it brings the seriousness to um, this whole situation that we're in because he is not messing around. He is definitely, as I've said many a times, a formidable foe. And I think what's cool with this villain too is you have the suspense, you have the terror, and there's this lore that they're bringing in, especially with like pantheons and ancient Egypt and things like that. It, it's a it's a fun thing to kind of bring into this new phase, which again, we have seen this before in the past with this villain, but it's cool to see that being brought back and this kind of a villain, because again, I was not expecting it to be him as the big bad of this. So for us to be now going in this direction, I am like props to you, Russell T. You definitely got me on this one. What do we expect? I mean, basically he has ultimately lost at this point. You know, he's he's been caught. He's been called out. He's been, he fell into the trap, okay? And this is this is happening. It's like, the world's ending. We got like this like little random clip of him and Mel, secret agent Mel, um, scooting along the city and you're just seeing the, like all of the, I don't even know what it is because it was kind of fast. It was like smoke and dirt and you know, it's just like destruction that's like following them, chasing them in the city, which I was getting very much like um, any of those like catastrophic films that you see where it's like the world is ending kind of a scenario. I mean, it's basically that that's happening. So this ageless enemy is like living supreme, living his best life right now. So he's like, yeah, I got you doc and I'm gonna completely annihilate everybody. Be the King B again. He was very adamant about saying that like he was the king of all of these gods like he is the top tier so definitely hurt his ego a bit when the doctor put him in that time corridor and so when i was reading the description of this episode they were talking about how there's nothing that can stop this devastation except for a woman which I'm assuming is probably gonna be Ruby. Something about Ruby, especially since she's tied to this whole thing, is she's gonna be the one that's gonna be able to help the situation in some way. What is it? I don't know. I'm still putting money on that she is probably a child of a god of some sort. And as I've said before in previous videos, the doctor, the universe works with him, um, which again, I have some theories as well about what the doctor might be himself. I think he might also be possibly a god, but of a different spectrum or a different pantheon, something like that. I'm not gonna say he's like the god of time necessarily. Maybe, maybe, or a child, or a child of the god of time or something. I don't know. I mean, you could go down that box, but I do think that he is a god of some sort, but has no recollection of it, has no idea about it. Um, Cause that's the thing we don't know. We don't know anything about who he actually is, right? That's the whole mystery that we got uh, with the previous doctor. How this whole origin story that we thought we knew was actually not the case. There was a lot more to it. I believe that the universe is always working with the doctor to try to help the doctor to bring balance to the universe, to the world, to life itself. By saying all of that, I think the universe, as they, it does all the time, has brought Ruby into his life to help with this situation. So we're gonna see, hopefully we're gonna find out more about Ruby because poor Ruby, she was getting so close to finding out who her mom was and then uh, of course they weren't able to find out due to some reasons and then the TARDIS went crazy and then here we got Sutek coming, the destroyer and how they're destroying the world. So, you know, they got a lot of things going on but I, I really enjoyed this episode. I am so excited for this reveal. I think it's super fun, super awesome. And to prepare you for the next episode, listen, you got some homework. Make sure to watch, and hey, I am too.
make sure to watch Pyramid of Mars because it's an episode from the classic Who that will give you a little bit more information about this foe that the doctor is facing, giving you a little bit more of a backstory. And there might be some things in that episode that Russell T is gonna pull from to add into this next episode. So I think it's really important to watch it. And then of course, to rewatch The Church on Ruby Road because he was mentioning that on a rewatch of The Church of Ruby Road, after watching everything up to this point of where we're at, that episode is gonna feel a lot more different and we're probably gonna pick up on a lot more things. So, hey, if you wanna really get ready for the next episode, I highly recommend watching those. If you're not gonna watch all of those, maybe specifically watch Pyramid of Mars. Again, it's classic Who, which is always fun to go back to, but this one will really help you in the episode coming up. So that is it for my review. You can tell I'm a lot happier in this episode and hopefully you guys are too, but please let me know in the comments. We've been having some really great discussions in the comments about these episodes and just please keep in mind, like everybody's got opinions here. You know, you can love it and you can hate it and that's cool. Um, you know, just because you hate it and I love it, I'm not going to be like a hater about it. I, I like to ask questions. I'm intrigued as to why you hated the episode or, you know, why you loved this episode when I hated it. I think that's the whole point of discussion. So, you know, just have fun. We're all geeks here. So, you know, but please let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode. Were you expecting the big reveal to be Sutek or, you know, were you expecting something else? How did you feel about this vibe? Are you excited for the next episode? Please let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, would you please give me a like just to show me some love? If you're into this kind of content, definitely subscribe to my channel. I don't just do Doctor Who reviews. I talk a lot about other things, sci-fi and specifically horror, because I just, oh, I love this two genres so much. And we're gonna be diving into a lot of exciting things coming up in the future. And then make sure to ring that bell so you don't miss it when I have a new video. Thank you for joining me on this super cosmic journey through this latest episode of Doctor Who, and I can't wait for the finale. So I'll see you guys next week. Take care.